Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening to those who are here on beautiful Queen City Nevis. Good evening to those who are in Sugar City St. Kitts. Good evening to those who are throughout the Caribbean, United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Those are the demographics, the geographical areas that we normally get high listenership. And so I say good evening, especially those all along the eastern seaboard of the United States, our friends and family in places like Boston and New York and Connecticut and New Jersey, uh, Florida, of course, down south. And then we have, of course, people who are in Georgia, Atlanta. Good evening, especially to my dear friend Ursula there in Villa Rica. And I trust and hope that the family is well. It is another Wednesday night, and we are happy to be here, as always, with something that we think is of interest. And uh, I... I confess I'm not a hundred percent, so I am. I brought in some reinforcements uh, this 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 Wednesday, and we'll get to that very shortly. I'm also wearing a bit of a sweater to keep me warm uh, here in the cold breeze, the winter breeze here in the studio at at Vaughan Radio. But I'm delighted to be here as always. I like the fact that for nigh fifteen years, and certainly as a politician now since 2006, and as an elected parliamentarian since 2007 I have always come and always been open and always uh, made myself available to discussions and to questions we do not always agree but I always encourage our callers to disagree if they must disagree strongly if they must but certainly not to be disrespectful that is something we will not tolerate here on on the mark uh, some good news that has been happening in the island of course I think everybody knows we're in the midst of the politics but before I get to that um, let me spend a moment on a sad note uh, just to send condolences to the family of Mr. Luther Williams of Brown Hill. Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, I, I, I would think that I grew up nearly as a child to him in a sense because we were next door neighbors. And uh, I marveled the other day at the extent to which it was what they say one hand go, another hand come, hand go, hand come, because my mother always had something to hand over the fence. And uh, Mr. Williams always had something to hand over the fence. And he and his his wife, Floris, who predeceased him, uh, were really excellent people, salt of the earth people, serious people there in Brown Hill, and uh, serious uh, contributors to the Brown Hill Society and the Nevis Society generally. Now, Mr. Williams had for many years plied his trade as a fisherman, and he has fed everybody. I remember he used to go out with um, Mr. Budgin from Jessup's and they were really uh, individuals who uh, got along well and, and really contributed significantly. I think he has made his mark and I would just like to take this moment to express my condolences to all of his children, um, to you know Franklin, to, to, to Piper, to Timbal, to Sam, to the daughters of course, Deborah, Catherine, Omil, and I hope I haven't missed any, but certainly those are the ones that I sort of grew up around there in Brown Hill. And so if you're listening, especially Sam, if you're listening, my brother, all my condolences to you and the family. And as I like to say, I'm hopeful that the prayers of the multitude will comfort you in your hour of bereavement. Uh, you know, nobody can tell you how to grieve or nobody can really tell you what grieving is like. It's a process that all of us have to go through for ourselves. And I have lost both mom and dad, so I understand what you all are dealing with and I send my heartfelt condolences to the entire family. So Timbal Piper, if you are listening overseas, Omel, my condolences to you and to those who are at home, my condolences to you as well. Nevis has lost a good man in Luther Land Williams and we pray that God will have mercy on his soul. As I said in terms of the politics, there's a lot happening and this evening I won't uh, detain you too long with my long and some say boring soliloquies because I have two gentlemen here in the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, the proud representative of the people of Nevis 11, and the Honorable Eric Evelyn, the proud representative of the people of Nevis 10. And both are here with me this evening to take your questions, to share their ideas and their vision, and to answer the question which is clearly being asked of us, why should we the people of Nevis send you back to Bastia? That is the fundamental question. We have so far run a campaign that is clean, that we have not engaged in any cussing and any row. We could, because we have any visions and we understand. I tell people, you can't go up in Brownhill or Henley Path or, or, or Butler's and don't know how to cuss. 
but we have always taken a position that we are discussing the ideas we are telling people why we are here how we got to this point and what our plans are to take Nevis and the Federation forward and so gentlemen good evening to you Honorable Eric Evelyn Welcome, the man from Gingerland. Good to see you here at Bond Radio yet again. Thank you very much. Good night, Mark, and good night to the listeners. It's always a pleasure to be here, and of course, it is a delight to always come and dialogue with the people. Of course, uh, I want to say good night to all of the folks in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis as well, and of course, those listening, um, whether you're in the region, um, in the diaspora, I know we have a lot, a lot of listeners to this program. I think it's the most widely listened to and most widely followed program, probably in the Federation and across the region. So I want to say good night to all of you who are listening and um, whether you're tuned in or whether you're following online. It's a pleasure to have you and it's a pleasure to be here. I want to join with you, Mark, in extending condolences to the family of Mr. Luther Williams. Of course, he was over 90 and uh, a couple of days ago I was at his home in brown hill of course we know f we from the social services normally once you reach certain milestone we come to celebrate and show you su show our support so i was there a couple of years ago when he made 90 and he was you know very very jolly very friendly gentleman and i also want to join with you in extending condolences you know he would have made a sterling contribution to to fishing and of course um we want to send condolences to his entire family whether you're in brown hill or whether you're abroad condolences to you i once i'm in the talking about the condolences i also in the condolences column as well i want to send condolences to the fergus family over in barnes gut and the extended family um linda fergus who um she was a member of our seniors group a very active member of our seniors group where uh, whenever our seniors met she was always there very sweet smiling quiet unassuming lady um from barnscott i know most of her children reside in england i know she have some relatives that, that here in nevis so i want to say good night to and condolences to her entire family as well mm -hmm. and of course we would have lost someone from hanley's road as well a gentleman by the name of arrington and he's the brother of jennifer freeman from rice's and so jennifer you and the family and the rest of the family overseas condolences to you as well once again mark it's a pleasure to be here and it's always always a pleasure to be on the mark um it's a place to be on a wednesday night i think a lot of persons look forward to the show and we look forward to uh, an excellent show again tonight Honorable Alexis Jeffers, the man yes. from Wayward. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mark, and uh, good night to both of you, of course, and uh, all of the listeners to On The Mark, whether locally, uh, regionally, or internationally. This is an international show, and persons, I understand, from time to time will set their dial on, or they would log on to the, their computer and ensure that when they get home in the evening, they have On The Mark up and running, and they can listen to this show uh, on a wednesday night it's good to be here uh mark and eric because <laughs> uh there are some issues um currently being debated in the federation but more so here on nevis as well and indeed i said uh once the invitation was extended today i said i'll come but i just came off the campaign trail in Cardock road just about 10 minutes ago so i am here now but this is a part of the entire process where uh, you have to put in the work and once you put in the work you get the results and that has been the case with you eric absolutely that has been the case with you as well mark uh but uh, yes the uh, island is preparing for an election of course but before we get to all that i also want to join both of you in offering my condolences to uh, the grieving families that are, are here on the island at this time. Uh, uh, Luther Williams, as you said, would have passed away. I, I knew him, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that he was 19 means that he was born somewhere around 1932, there about the early, early 1930s. Uh, it therefore means he would have gone through uh, some difficult times, World War II and all of the difficulties that we are experiencing now where you had difficulties with sourcing food and uh, uh, transportation issues and having access to the basic stuff then. But he would have survived and as many others would have survived. And that's why I always pay homage to our elderly because they would have seen things, gone through things that many of us may never go through in our lifetime. But of course, uh, since things are cyclical, some of these things may very well come our way from time to time. But they certainly would have uh, blazed some trail back in the day and would have held the family together, worked hard to ensure that they take care of their, their children and to bring them to what they would have become. So I want to 
pay homage uh, this evening to Mr. Williams in, in, uh, on his passing. He's, he has passed, yes, but he would have left a, a legacy and a mark behind because his legacy will be uh, borne out through his children, grandchildren, great grand, and the entire family. So I express my sympathies to one and all at this point in time. Uh, mark, yes, as I was saying, that they, this is election time. We're here as they say three years early but of course the CCM has always said and we continue to say uh, that we are a party that represents the people of Nevis, the entire uh, Nevisian uh, populace and so once we uh, decide and determine that we're standing up for what is best for Nevis uh, it means whatever comes our way we're willing to stand and defend and if it means that we have to walk away and rebuild and regroup then we can do so and some may have a difficulty with that but i will say to you that it's better to uh, stand up for what you know is right and be even be as they say have your mandate removed because you're standing up for what is right and that is what is important some say uh, these things uh, because they sound nice but unless you are willing to put um, actions to words then of course it means nothing but we are willing to uh, put actions to words and that is why we have been the party of choice here on the island of Nevis uh, for the last 35 plus years and we'll continue to be the, the party of choice because what we say is what we mean and what we mean is what we say and I'll leave it there for now uh, Mark and uh, of course as we go along yes the discussion will develop as we go along yes thank you all right well thank you very much and i wasn't aware of the other deaths in the <coughs> island and so eric as always you're always on top of things i want to commend you for that and to express my own condolences to the forest family and to my dear friend jennifer as well and so i am to hope that our prayers and the prayers of the multitude will comfort them in their hour of bereavement uh gentlemen there has been quite a bit happening and I think that, uh, you know, clearly we are on the campaign trail. Alexis has just said that he has just come in from the campaign trail. And we're here. Me too. Okay. <laughs> so I, I look Last like night I, I finished minutes to eight. I, I, I was home <laughs> campaigning to my family. <laughs> you know, because uh, you can't take any vote for granted. Right. So, but um, I, I appreciate that. A number of things are, are happening, colleagues, in terms of the Federation. A lot is being said. I have been particularly concerned at the rhetoric that I hear coming from the opposition in Nevis. And I recognize that in a democracy we will have opposition because that is the nature of all democracies and particularly strong and robust democracies I think Nevis is. The difficulty however is that the messaging that we're getting is in my view an anti-Nevis message. And I say that because the sense that I get is that they are unable, afraid, reluctant, whichever word you want to use, to call out Timothy Harris in Sinkis for the difficulties in terms of what has been happening on this fair share issue. I know that a lot of this fair share issue originated because of the talk, for example, about CBI. And I don't care whether you're NRP, CCM, or you have no alignment. It cannot be fair that the island of Nevis is getting 7% of CBI receipts. It cannot be right. And I think that the people of Nevis need to start to appreciate that with our proper share what we can do here on the island. So many of them are complaining and saying, oh, this hasn't mm -hmm. happened and that mm -hmm. hasn't happened and that <laughs> hasn't happened. And you, if you stop, you recognize that all the things that we would like to happen cost money. Mm -hmm. And if we are being denied that money, then how is it they can still stand up and defend? And that is the difficulty that I have had in relation to their experience. But fair share, as we have been saying on the platform, gentlemen, it's not only about money. It's also about opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's also about the way that the people of Nevis are perceived in this federal construct and in this country. Whether or not Alexis Jeffers and Eric Evelyn and Mark Brantley and every other Nevisian boy and girl has something to offer to national development. And more and more. And I keep, you know, I use the example of the peace program. A program that all three of us supported. And I looked at that and I said, whilst they're telling Nevis that, listen Nevis, things are closed. 1,225 people on the program in St. Kitts, 71 in Nevis. Now, some said, oh, you want to say you're all criminals. And I'm not about that. I'm about pointing out that every single social program that we've put together, we have over 5,600 people on the pack. A program designed to provide relief mm -hmm. to those who are having difficulty. We all know the number of people in Nevis so heavily dependent on tourism who lost their jobs at the hotels and the restaurants, the taxi drivers. 
they can't get on the pop cover till it's closed. And so Nevis has out of 5,606, a mere 700 persons. These things cannot be right. And when we talk about them, it seems to me that some get upset. When we go further, we look at the step. Almost 5,000 people in the country are benefiting from the step because those that are on step proper and those that are now on parks and beaches. Nevis has never moved past 300. Mm -hmm. And we are an elected government, and we can't here in Nevis put a single person on the pop, a single person on the step, a single person on the peace program. We run exclusively from Bastia, and we run in a way that is unfair to the people of Nevis. I reminded somebody the other day about the roofing program. After the hurricanes of 2017, remember we did not get a direct hit, but we mm -hmm. had some damage. And we sat, you gentlemen are not there yet, but we sat and we discussed. Mm -hmm. I had just, oh, yeah. I believe, as, as you know, my premiership was just about to start. And I said, listen, the people of Nevis need to benefit. Timothy Harris was reluctant. He was resistant. And I said, no, they must benefit. And so we got, because one thing about Nevis, we do things properly. What mm -hmm. did we do? We went to, 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 to Nevis Disaster, disaster Management. Right. We got the report. <coughs> and based on that report, we had about $3.5 million. That clearly was not the entire damage, but that is what was reported at the time. And we submitted that and we got the 3.5 after some hustling. I was shocked just last week or week or four to hear that they've spent already $71 million in sinkings on the same roofing program. This is 2022, five long years after we had any disruption mm -hmm. from hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And sinkings still getting roof fixed house, whole house. Some people getting out of this supposed. These things are not right. And the thing that bothers me, colleagues, is that when we speak up and we say, not in in anger towards our brothers and sisters in Sinkits, but in anger towards a system mm -hmm. that has persisted long before us and one that we pledged to change. People say we're being divisive. And I used the example the other night I said on the platform, I said Martin Luther King would have come to an America where he was a black American. And in that America, where blacks had come out of slavery, they had the Jim Crow laws. Black people had to go to segregated schools, which were inferior schools. They couldn't go and sit down in a restaurant with white people. They couldn't go to certain hotels. I saw a movie about Dorothy Dandridge. I don't know if you all ever heard of her. She was a famous black actress, an early Hollywood star. And they showed a, a scene in the movie where, out of protest, she put her toe into the pool at this white hotel. They emptied the entire pool. Hmm. So when Martin Luther King came along and said, no, this was not good enough, they found him divisive and to the point where they assassinated him. But again, it is people like him who change the world because they point out. And that is the thing everybody knows because everybody sees it. The same youngsters on the peace program in Nevis that talk to me all the time. They apply for loans to set up a little business. They can't get a response from the Development Bank. And I'm saying that is why Nevis needs to stand up. I said to somebody just yesterday, whoever sits in government in Nevis, and I'm confident it will be the CCM, but whoever sits in government has to confront these very same issues. Mm -hmm. And I played a clip from our national heroes to mm -hmm. Simeon Daniel. Mm -hmm. And people saw it as already playing because Sim is endorsing mm -hmm. him. The endorsement is for me wonderful. Not many of us can say we were ever endorsed by a national hero. However, that is not my purpose for playing the clip. You know. My purpose for playing the clip is that Sim Daniel when he spoke was almost prophetic. Yes. It's almost as if all those years ago he was looking forward and he said, what about the NRP? They want to reduce us to mendicants. Mm -hmm. That's the language he used mm -hmm. of his own party. Yes. And that seems that clip seemed to be affecting some people aggressively. Creating emotions. And I don't know why the emotions. <coughs> why the emotions seem that I would have spoken to what he saw. Mm -hmm. And if I see good in you, Eric, and I say I mm -hmm. see good in you, why should that upset anybody? Precisely. Mm -hmm. But gentlemen, there are a lot of issues. And I, mm -hmm. I, I, I can get passionate about some of these things mm -hmm. because... I, I think that this narrative about being anti sink it really needs to go out the window. Mm -hmm. Of course, but, but that, and I'm sure you realize that almost every time I speak on the platform, I say that it, this has nothing to do with our brothers and sisters in St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. we, live, we live in harmony. But this has, as you rightly says, to do with the system. And I mean, I, I, was, I was pleasantly surprised this happened when I was doing my house to house. I mean, the kind of, um, what I'm getting from some of the folks who I speak to, there was one lady and she said to me, you know, Eric, I wish, I wish that they would come. 
when you all are standing up for Nevis, that the opposition stand with you all? Because this is about our country, mm -hmm. and our country has suffered too long under um, regimes from in Bas that are based in Bastia. Mm -hmm. And she said it's about time that all Nevisians stand together where this is concerned. But Eric, how are you going to oh. stand when you're being financed? Mm. By Timothy ah. Harris. How are you going to stand? You already compromise yourself. How are you going to yeah. stand when the very candidates were selected mm -hmm. by Timothy Harris? I, and guess, you're, I guess you're right. But how are you going to stand on that? Is the problem and divisions? I don't know that we could sugarcoat that. But the yeah. fact is, but the fact is, Mark and Alexis, even though the opposition is not standing, Nivish, all the other divisions and residents need to stand with us, well. because this is a, this is our cause. Mm -hmm. This is the cause of this island, this little tiny island. And really and truly, we should not be treated as no second class. We are all equal. And, and of yeah. course, we, we keep saying is that, that we are saying we want equal shades. It's about fear and it's about equity. Mm -hmm. We are not saying we need half of the pie. But we are saying that give us what is truly ours. And I was, mm -hmm. I was really heartened when that lady told me this afternoon. The opposition need to stand with you all because, I mean, this is about me, this. Well, mm -hmm. well, Mark, I've always, um, you know, endorsed your le leadership and I've told you that, in my opinion, in terms of a leader here on the island of Nevis who is prepared to stand up and have stood up for what is right and, and a just cause for the people of Nevis, you have done so. And I, I'm, I'm going to say here now that history will look at you kindly and the CCM party because I will safely say that no other party has uh, stood up the way that this party has done and under your leadership we are seeing something you alluded to Martin Luther King at some point in life somebody has to stand up and over the years we have had politicians from Nevis who have gone to send kits and you're right Eric this is not about a sink kits Nevis thing but we are Nevisians first and we are defending the Nevis cause first and foremost and you as a leader would have gone there and have stood up for a cause a just cause as well and for that the people of Nevis should be proud of your leadership in that regard and I will stand with you any day because I share the same uh, sentiments and I embrace the same values that you are uh, embracing in terms of what we are fighting for. And you know, <laughs> you said the NRP or the opposition should stand with us. You won't get it. And there are reasons and, and Brandy mm -hmm. would have just alluded to some of those reasons. But that being said, they are so confused about what they should do and must do as a party that we have all of these noise out there being made. The central point of this campaign is that we are seeking for what is right and what is just for Nevis. Nevis fair share. And there should be no compromise in that regard. We are not half of a, a citizen. We are not half of a people. We are a full-fledged uh, citizen. Uh, we are full-fledged citizens. And as such, whatever is available to this uh, federation, of which we are part, should be also available to us as Nevision. I'll go further and say this, that just to show how confused they are when they first came out the gate they said oh not not come and that's true that's true nothing was coming because under the nrp not one thing came to nevis loan a no loan forget came. about the loan i don't want to hear about the loan because <laughs> that is nothing it is something yes but it is not what we are talking about we're not going to think it's to seek loans we're going to seek our fair share of the cbi receipts and nobody gonna tell me they bring a loan over here and say they got something they got nothing but when they're um, how should we call it? When Timothy Harris started giving them their script, call it a script to go out there and campaign with, because that's all it is. Script and some cash. And some cash, well, yeah. add the cash to it, but the script is go out there and talk about 400 uh, million. What happened to the 400 million? Go out there and talk about 21 million. What happened to that? Go and talk about a 100% increase in all kind of. Listen. Those are the scripts that were given to them to go and campaign with. They had nothing to campaign on because you understand when it comes to the CCM, we had our agenda in place to get the infrastructure of Nevis up, take care of our uh, social programs, take care of the people of Nevis in a way to make us proud Nevisians and proud about our government and what we're doing here for and on behalf of the people. But they came with all of these nonsense that were given to them. And then this question about 400 million, every time I hear it, I say these people got to be out of their minds. Why I say that is because the whole of Nevis, 
You can see what 400 million has done, and they can come and say what they want to say. We came out of a pandemic, um, Brantley, 2020. We had to cut all kinds of programs, not necessarily programs, but we had to reduce and give people uh, breaks here for electricity, mm -hmm. water, uh, at least taxes were given mm -hmm. that, that six months break. Well, if you cut all these things or uh, forego some of these things, well, where's the money to come from? And the hotel sector shut down. And the hotel sector shut down where you would have gotten some, 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 some mm -hmm. receipts. Nobody was moving. And anyhow, you compare this pandemic to any other thing, at least you're being unjust, in my opinion, because you had the financial uh, crisis in 2008. But the, the, the borders were still open all over the world. People were still moving. This was like no other. And we're not using that as an excuse. But it's the reality that when that hit, it was something none of us expected and none of us were prepared for. But at least monies had to be used up to keep the social services going to pay. And no one would have uh, missed a paycheck. We didn't, we didn't uh, withhold a paycheck from anyone. And Eric, you were asking for money. You still spent money to make sure that people got, uh, when they came to you and they of were in course. difficulties, yes. you made sure they... Something as simple as food. Mm -hmm. you know, we Even from sure. the NHLDC, those persons who were paying the Nevis Cooperative Credit Union, they came to us and asked for some reprieve. And then those bills still had to be paid by someone, meaning we had to service our loans at Social Security. Who had to pay that? The government had to pay that. And you couldn't tell Social Security we don't we don't want to pay because because the pandemic is biting us. No, Social Security themselves had an obligation to the the entire uh, a country as well, and they played their part. So we had to play our part. So when you think about these things and you hear this nonsense about 400 million, I think they were in a slumber for the last 20 years. That's what the the, the, the leader of NRP would have said. That she was she has been here for 20 years. So after 20 years, you wake up. What is 400 million dollars? spend well he's hitting all of us in the face and hitting her in the face too. i don't want to get in to anything regarding her because she's totally lost when it comes to the issues here on the island i mean anybody who has been withdrawn and disconnected from the community for 20 years cannot come and tell me anything in this community that i don't know about that i have been a part of for the last uh, 53 years and performing in this island so i'm just saying that the people of nevis have to separate the fluff and the nonsense from what is reality. The reality is that the Kansan Sitosun movement has proven time and time again that this is the party that has the best interests of this island at heart. And we don't just talk about putting Nevis first, uh, putting the people of Nevis first. Uh, that has been our agenda and that is what we have done over the last 36 plus years since we have been a vibrant party here on the island of Nevis. And that is why the people of Nevis continue to repose their confidence in us because we are the best thing on the island of Nevis. We're the only one who have proven that to the island of Nevis and to the Federation and beyond. CCM is the party that they continue to roll with and this election is going to be the same thing because all of the nonsense that I'm hearing out there will not put any bread on the people's plate or any food on the people's plate. The CCM is talking bread and butter issues. Fear share is what we are talking about. It's true fear share we're going to get all of the, the work done here on the island of Nevis that we have on, on, on the table to do. So. Brandon, I, I just, just before just, uh, just before Mark comes in as well, I just wanted to um, back you up the Alexis in terms of the leadership of, 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 of Mr. Brantley. Because I mean this is a leadership that has been stellar. Performance in terms of your leadership, Mr. Brantley, has been stellar. I mean in every regard. Alexis spoke about the pandemic. I mean the the, the leadership during the pandemic, I mean unquestionable kept the whole I, I mean afloat. kept every the, uh, ship afloat and mm -hmm. you're right of course you said when we were in cabinet we had to be cutting corners here cutting corners there but we kept the ship afloat and people didn't understand the kind of things that we had to go through in in those cabinet meetings but we ensured that things were kept afloat i mean this afternoon when i was doing my house to house a gentleman said to me la thank god a boy mark mm. because i mean he said i mean he was talking about this standing up issue as well mm -hmm. and he said I can't believe if you say Mark standing up for Nevis and I love that mm -hmm. and you got, I'm happy that you guys are standing with him mm -hmm. because this is all about the country this is all about Nevis and as I said it's not not, not fight it's not the fight between St. Kitts and Nevis and I mean people the, our message I believe is resonating out there the kind of responses the kind of um, I'm getting from people on the campaign trail our message is resonating and I think it is also resonating among even some of the NRP supporters. Listen, I, I have said, uh, um, Brantley, that when it comes to leadership on this issue or any other issue that pertains to Nevis, I believe Nevis should be proud 
of you at this time. And I say that to say this as well too, that when Nevis, when the entire Nevisian community go to vote, I want them to look at the leadership of this party and the other side. Eh? Look at the leadership and look at the candidates that uh, are seeking to represent the island of Nevis. And when you make the comparison, there's absolutely no way you can send the leader of NRP down there to stand for you. You have proven since 2007 you've been there on local issues, regional issues, and international issues. You have stood up out there internationally for the island of Nevis or the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And by extension, the island of Nevis, because here's where you were born and raised. So you are Nevisian as well when you stand up out there. So I want to say that. Yeah? You compare myself to any other candidate and you understand that in me, I am someone who have shown my dedication to the betterment of this island and to this federation. I make no bones about it. I love to work and I continue to work hard every single day for the island of Nevis and by extension the federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. This is a peacemaker guy who believe in calm and tranquility but he's also a hard worker. And I want to say right now to the entire federation, if it was left to Eric we wouldn't have been where we are. Because he asked for uh, 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 some intervention. He asked for um, a, retreat. A, a retreat to be held. And he begged and beseeched. And he laid it out that Monday morning. He laid it out. And, and the leader of cabinet at that time acceded and said, we'll, we'll look at it. But it never happened. If that had happened, then a lot of the issues would have been put on the table. And chances are we would have been able to work some of, of it out. But obviously he was not interested in working. Towards it. We have been blamed for something that I am telling the entire Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Don't blame Eric. Don't blame me. Don't blame Grantley. Do not blame the three guys from Pam, Sean, Lindsay and John L. Don't blame us. We tried, and we tried desperately to save this thing. But one man felt like he wanted to match the whole thing up. And then he comes say, fire somebody. He ain't fire nobody, but I know the electorate is going to do what is necessary here shortly. And we will be re-employed, and he'll stay fired as far as I'm concerned. Because the people must understand that when it comes to governance and seriousness, meaning not wanton, wanton waste of the government resources, because that is what is happening now. We believe in utilizing the people's resources properly and equitably on the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that is what we want to bring to the table and that is what I know we are capable of doing. But I do believe that when it's all said and done, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis would understand. Listen, unity is the best thing for this federation. Whether it was uh, team unity which of course unity. which of course would have fallen apart simply because one man was re refusing or refused to ensure that he can compromise because that's what leadership is about you must have compromise in between there you must be willing to work with your partners you must be able to say fellas i'm wrong and let's because we do that you do that from time to time brantley and that is why i give you kudos and hallmark on your that's one of the hallmark of your leadership that you have been willing to listen you have been willing to compromise you have been willing to praise your your ministers i hear you all the time praise up eric praise me praise up spencer praise up even lindsay and and john l at times you know you know and that's what you do as a leader because a leader you should not be a maximum leader and everything is all about you and everything revolves around you give people a chance to make you look better as a leader Give them a chance to, to excel and prove themselves to you that they can do the work. But instead, that was not the case. But team unity is no longer. Real unity is what we're talking about now. We're, we're two parties. People's Action Movement and the Concerned Citizens Movement. You hear I said two movements. We're in a party story. It's a two movement that understand that people are the center of what you do. The people are the fulcrum of anything that you do from here on going here on forward. And irrespective of what anybody might say, I do believe in, in unity. I do believe there is uh, some space for us to work together as a team. Both St. Kitts and Nevis can excel once we are willing to work together. And that is what we are putting forward to the people. Well, gentlemen, um, thank you both for the very kind words. But I will respond this way and say that my <coughs> job as leader of CCM and as leader of the cabinet and as Premier of Nevis has been made easy because of who I'm working with. And you use some adjectives to describe both yourself and Eric, the others as well, who are in the cabinet in terms of the hard work. I think that if we were to be defined by one thing, it's that. Yes. You know, a simple thing perhaps to some. But just to demonstrate the level of my confidence in my team, mm -hmm. 
that there's some mornings I get up and for whatever reason I have a meeting or I, I'm not feeling 100% or I have to travel. And I call Alexis at 6 o'clock. I say, Alexis, he get up early just like me. Alexis, mm -hmm. I want you to handle the cabinet today mm -hmm. as the deputy premier of Nevis. That has never happened in St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. Anytime Timothy Harris was away in St. Kitts, no cabinet could keep. Mm -hmm. So it speaks in a little way, yes, but it mm -hmm. speaks to what you're talking about mm -hmm. in terms of the character. Mm -hmm. Right? When you're all about yourself, the people that are around the table are just mm -hmm. too help you in your quest for self-aggrandizement. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But when you understand your role as a leader, because if Eric fails, I fail. Of course. If Alexis fails, I yes. fail. Mm -hmm. And you all would know the difficult conversations that we have sometimes, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. whether it is in the cabinet, because we pull up each other. True. When I fail, True. you all come and say, Mark, so, so, so. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to harbor malice and resentment towards my colleagues for pointing out that I have erred, then where are we going? Mm -hmm. There's no president and no emperor here, you know. True. So, for me, gentlemen, I want to say kudos to you both as well. And you're, not, you're not always pulling you all up. I just want to say kudos to both of you mm. for the excellent performance. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And, Alexis, I want to pick up from one thing you said about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You realize we have not been talking about the pandemic in this campaign. But I want the people of Nevis to understand that no leader and no government in the last 100 years has had to deal with a global pandemic. True. True. No, no. We've had to deal yeah. with hurricanes when the hurricane gone, which right. I fix and come back. Mm -hmm. We had to deal with financial crisis, but mm -hmm. as you said, the borders remain open. Mm -hmm. Nothing has shut down the world like this COVID-19 pandemic. And so when I hear people say, oh, seven years I owe India, mm -hmm. this and that, I say, but people seem not to remember. And perhaps it's because we did such a good job that they notice. Mm -hmm. Because... Mm -hmm. People got paid, people got paid on time, people got paid in full. Nobody stopped to say, well, but how this cabinet here get to do? Precisely. Them fellows are working magic. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that we were committed. Mm -hmm. I went without a salary in Nevis for 20 months. You all took salary cuts. Yes. Mm -hmm. Twice. Cuts. Well, to, twice, that, yes. Well, twice, that was during the pandemic, but also in 2013. Right? Mm -hmm. So when we got in and then again mm -hmm. during COVID, mm -hmm. you all would have foregone certain emoluments, mm -hmm. certain allowances. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is all of us, and he gave me a good launching pad now to say, but one of the things I'm very proud of as a party now, I switch into the party, mm -hmm. is that during the height of the pandemic, we provided tens of thousands of dollars from yes. our pockets to provide food vouchers Water. to people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm proud tonight, gentlemen, to announce that the party is doing it again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In light of the rising cost of food that is affecting all of us, the party is committing some one hundred and twenty thousand dollars of our money we're not talking about government i want to be sure, clear sure of our money we will mm -hmm. be providing two hundred dollar vouchers to a minimum of two hundred families for the next three months spread all around the island spread all around the island mm -hmm. and so again this is us now we gotta take the money and say all right they go mm -hmm. and party and let me go and remember get artists. Remember we don't have an additional salary and right, still right. doing it. <laughs> but the reality is that we, this is again demonstrative. Mm -hmm. And so, members of the mm -hmm. public, you will get information mm -hmm. on this shortly. Mm -hmm. But we are going to spread this over June, mm -hmm. July, and August. Mm -hmm. And what we are going to do is to provide at least 200 families all across the island with a minimum of $200 in groceries. We're not buying no grocery for you. Mm -hmm. We're not coming by you with no blue bag mm -hmm. and taking a picture with you. Mm -hmm. You will get a voucher and you will go mm -hmm. to the supermarket, Rams, Value Mart, um, uh, Best, Best Buy, buy, Best buy and you will, you will buy what you want. Mm -hmm. Because I remember one time during the pandemic, I went and buy some crackers and things for a man. The man told me to eat them chippiness then. <laughs> so people want that. Mm -hmm. And unlike others, I won't get into name calling, who can give you something, they give you a scandal bag. Mm -hmm. With a, a, a corned beef and a cracker, and they got to take a photo with you. Mm -hmm. That is not CCM. Exploiting right? people. That is not CCM. Mm -hmm. And so I want to make that announcement. More details will come. Mm -hmm. But I was very happy that today the vouchers were purchased. And I Excellent. want to thank Excellent. the supermarkets because all of them have stepped up and mm -hmm. said, listen, this is such a great initiative. We're mm -hmm. going to partner with you. Good. Mm -hmm. So I really want to thank them for stepping up. And we're going to do $40,000 each month for the next three months. Mm -hmm. And if resources permit, we will continue okay. beyond that if we are able but these three months when we're dealing with rising food prices i think it is the least that we can do to demonstrate to our people that listen we care and our people in the safety net and i want to make it clear it has nothing to do with 
who people support. That's right. Mm -hmm. I think Eric Evelyn in a chat we had, he made it very clear yes, mm -hmm. that this has to do mm -hmm. with people who are in, in need. need. Right. Now, gentlemen, before we, we, we digress, I just wanted, especially for our overseas audience, incidentally, I saw a message going around today that um, let me deal with this issue first of employment. We got some job numbers up to March. Mm -hmm. And I was encouraged, very encouraged, because comparing 2021 to 2022, I am pleased to announce that jobs in Nevis, sorry, the number of employees in Nevis grew by 2.9%. On Sinkits, they had growth of 1.7%. The number of jobs in Nevis over that period grew by 4.9%. On Sinkits, they grew by 2.3%. The gross monthly wages in Nevis grew by 7.3%. That is remarkable. In Sinkits, it grew by 5.1%. And the gross monthly wages per employee in Nevis grew by 4.3%, in sync is by 3.2%. And then the gross monthly wages per job in Nevis grew by 2.4%, and in sync is by 2.6%. I think this data coming as it does from Social Security. This is not CCM mm -hmm. data, this is yes. not government yes. data. Coming from Social Security. It's instructive because it shows a few things, including the fact that we here in Nevis, who can't get our fair share, mm -hmm. have been outperforming mm -hmm. in terms of jobs in the federation now we also understand that this data does not capture a lot of the self-employed this data does not capture a lot of people who are perhaps working many jobs but not declaring mm -hmm. so we could anticipate that the number there is still larger in terms of actual Excellent. employment Excellent. and anytime brothers and sisters jobs are going it means that the country is on the right track mm -hmm. the economy is on the right track and i feel proud of that because i said we are coming out of a pandemic in fact, just today, I'm told that we had 11 additional cases. We're here tonight, and you all can't even see our faces because we're wearing masks. Mm -hmm. We're still encouraging our people to wear the mask and to do the responsible thing. We're clearly not out of the woods yet, and we still have cases. However, the cases have been mild, and I believe that's the power of the vaccine, that people are not being hospitalized, and thankfully, people are not dying. But, gentlemen, mm -hmm. a lot, as I said, has been happening. Mm -hmm. We are in the source of this campaign, and I am appealing to the people of Nevis, those who are here and those who are also abroad. And let me just spend a minute on the abroad story. The reason I want to spend a minute on it, I got a note today that said that the PLP, mm -hmm. Prime Ministers, well, not Prime Minister, Timothy Harris, let me refer to him as Timothy Harris, the Honorable Timothy Harris, the representative for number seven, that he has sent teams up to North America to tell people get ready to come home and vote. Mm. And you know, I sat, actually, I shouldn't say sat, I lay in my bed this afternoon as I just start trying to collect my thoughts for the show tonight. And I reflected that those people Timothy Harris wanted to disenfranchise, he had a plan to make sure that nobody overseas could be able to exercise their franchise here. And I remember Juicy Byron coming and talking about, oh, they're going to amend the law and this and that. I stood up. In fact, I remember that we were at the cabinet room just outside the Prime Minister's office, mm -hmm. right there at Church Street at Government Headquarters. And I said to them that I am prepared to resign over this issue. Mm -hmm. This issue then caused us to meet at Park Hyatt. You all remember? Yes, yes. When yes. this boy Peter Wickham come here, Wickham, yeah. mm. handpicked by them to bring a message, mm -hmm. and he come here. Mm -hmm. And we said to them, no, the CCM could not have gone to court in 2011 to defend the right of people to vote and then disenfranchise our brothers and sisters. Who are we going to watch a man like Dr. Bichardo mm -hmm. or, or, or Dr. Dr. Eustace Huggins or my friend Roach or Shark or any of these people who have given their blood, sweat and tears to neighbors mm. and tell them that they can't vote in their homeland? They can't vote in their homeland. And I said, no, so I just smiled. And I said, look at this now. Because the same man who was adamant that the overseas voters should not be able to vote in the country, their country, mm -hmm. now send people so to tell them, get ready. I wish all of them will come. And I wish all of them will vote against. against because that has been yeah. the experience. Yeah. And I wanted to make the point publicly tonight. Let them come yeah. and say me like. Hypocrisy. Because I stood up and I said, listen, mm -hmm. I cannot sit in a cabinet that will disenfranchise. I cannot face our people. We know the meetings we've had in BVI, mm -hmm. in USVI, mm -hmm. 
He's gone to America, to the Bronx and all over to meet. How am I going to face those people and tell New Visions? Packer. I hope that doesn't make me a call in even. <laughs> but fellas who every culture I'm going here. Pay the taxes here still. Pay because taxes, they got the yes. taxes. Dion Pemberton. Send remittances yeah. and they got a family here. They can stay in touch. My They're people are invested. They, I tell people all the time. A lot of our people only happen. Some of them by accident. Or some by mm -hmm. circumstance. So. To be living in, uh, outside Nevis. Yes. <laughs> but they heart and I use my father mm -hmm. as an example. You know, my father lived abroad for nearly 40 years. Mm -hmm. And my father always had one thing in his head. Me go back to Nevis. Mm-hmm. And eventually, God bless him enough to retire, build a home here, and come home. How are you going to tell people like that? Mm -hmm. That you can no longer exercise what is a fundamental right in your country mm -hmm. to vote. Now the same people I'm going to. Mm -hmm. I'm here to say to the Nivisions abroad, CCM supporters, and those who support the People's Action Movement, that we will be ensuring that you get the necessary messaging to this and other forums. And when the opportunity comes, we're asking that you make yourself available to come home and vote for your country and I am proud of the stance that I took and the CCM took to stand up for the right of our people to vote I said I could not be a hypocrite mm -hmm. I couldn't have carried hands with them to court and tell them to take out mm -hmm. 203 people off the list and victimize people and then yeah, I come on to the same no. and that has been the mm -hmm. thing so I just want to put that on the table mm -hmm. because that is Yet another example of the hypocrisy that we see. I suppose now it's all right. Now, okay, Mark, stop it from happening. So let me go out and tell the people how great they are and mm -hmm. how much you love the diaspora. I didn't want them no to vote. Sh no shame. And it comes back again, Mark, to this party standing up for people. Because mm -hmm. I could recall, I remember, I remember in the cabinet when you said, this party, CCM, we will never support disenfranchising overseas voters. Never. I recall it very, very mm -hmm. well. But you said this party has always been about ensuring that people who have the right to vote in this country can exercise exactly. that right. And worse yet, the reason why Timothy Harris wanted to disenfranchise them, he said that the overseas vote favored Douglas. That was the reason. No. Not about any reform or any need for whatever. The overseas vote favored Douglas. Mm -hmm. Because in 2015, the Douglas played in the Madland. Unity couldn't win the election. That was his motivation. Mm. So I'm going to go down that road. My job is to go out and appeal to voters wherever they are. Sure. If they're in Timbuktu, we need to mm -hmm. make the case to them and say, listen, you, we, are, we represent the best hope. Not to disenfranchise our brothers and sisters and make them feel like second class in their own country. We shouldn't do that. And that was my point that I made and I stuck with it. And I, so today, as I said, I had a good chuckle. Mm -hmm. I said, my life sometimes yeah. is funny. That you work hard. To walk the ground, a monkey come and try and run mm -hmm, on it. Mm -hmm. Because if Timothy Harris had his way, there will be no more overseas vote. Well, I am almost certain that people out there are, are, are waiting to get a ticket to come to vote against him anyway. But l l let's look at it, um, Mark. You and this party have stood up for uh, the right for persons to vote in this in this island. In 2011, when you recall that, that election when persons were removed from the list in St. John's. Over 200 persons. You could have evenly just walked away and said, well, yes. us, you know, such is life. Mm -hmm. and that would have been the easier road to take. But you decided you're going to stand up and defend that cause, uh, the cause of those persons who were disenfranchised. You were successful. You were successful and any time anyone does a research of any case law, a precedence has been set. So whether someone in, in, in South Africa or wherever pick up that, that this case, uh, Mark Brantley versus, what was it? All of those. All like, of those. All yeah. of those um, unforgotten <laughs> yeah, persons. Uh, forgotten persons, forgotten I must persons, say. Yeah. All of those. It would show that Mark Brantley stood up then. Like him or not, love him or not, he has decided that, listen, his lot is with the people and he's going to stand up. And CCM has been saying the same thing from day one. And you move on. This matter that is before us, this fear share, is just as important. Uh, I mean, every issue when it comes to Nevis um, is important. Every issues are important. But this is just as important. Just as important, I should say. And that is why the people of Nevis have continued to rally with this great party. I said it before. And, and, and let me say this. 
I want the voters out there in the dis diaspora who will come home to vote. I almost want to say if you're coming home to vote and you're not coming down to support the CCM in this cause, to stand up for the island of Nevis for our fear shit to be had out of the CBI receipt, then probably it doesn't make sense to come in. But I don't want to disenfranchise anyone. But all I'm appealing to you is that once you are coming, just come with one motive in mind. And that is a vote for the CCM party so that we can have the three representatives here, the three candidates who are seeking to represent the island of Nevis. You know, I've always talked about this devoided voices and sinkets. We had that for almost, for just about 20 years, where you had this divided voice. Nevis, I always believe, is in a much better position, and our agenda will be much more um, articulated once you have uh, united voices. And that is why in 2020, when the decision was made, or when the, the, uh, the votes were, were counted, we got the three seats, and that is where the, uh, the, 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 uh, the the power, so to speak, if I were to put it that way. Or, let's say, that is where the u united voice was created. And that is why we are where we are, because we could have stood up down there. I, I want to say, Bradley, if you give me a chance, that my understanding is that the NRP had already decided what they were going to do if they were to win Nevis 11 in 2020. <laughs> they, were, they already decided what they were going to do. A seat was guaranteed to another party in St. Kitts. And if that is the case, Brantley, you would have been down there perhaps with Eric, not me, because if Nevis 11 had gone the other way, I wouldn't have been down there. And that is where Nevis would have been shortchanged, because remember we said before that over a 20-year period when there was this, this one seat for the NRP and two for the CCM, nothing came and nothing would have ever come. And then five years between 2010 and 2015, still nothing came even though NRP had a representative at the table mm -hmm. in government. And people need to remember that, you know. People need to remember the NRP between 2010 and 2015 had a representative who was in government. Well, in fact, between 2010 and 2013, they controlled both the NIA and had somebody in the cabinet at the federal level. We what would have taken over in 2013. What, what more power do you need more than that? You had three years when nothing And came. nothing. Nothing. And they keep saying that they were able to do more with less. Listen, the CCM left a buoyant economy of behind. Of course. Low debt. Low debt mm -hmm. and cash. When I say cash, you think about the, the NHLDC. Mm -hmm. They collected over $58 million from the sale of 600 acres of land down there at Pennies. Cash. That was left behind, plus the lands that they would have sold in the interim while they were in government. Ten million U.S. at school. And the ten million, when you add all that together, you're talking well in excess of eighty million dollars they had at their disposal. And they talk about more with less. You had more money then. You had to. You had less work to do in order to run a, a country or an island because things were made well for you. So with this whole talk, and they talk about cost overrun too. You remember that same Nipak building down there? Mm -hmm. Lefko brought in an estimate for what? About nine million? Somewhere about eight or nine I million dollars. Numbers, but, yes. but they ended up about fifteen million dollars mm -hmm. cost overrun. And, and you can go and on still leaking. And still you can go on and on. We had to do a lot of fixing. Of fix the AC. There was an electrical electrical fire there at one point two. We had to fix the roof. Fix the roof. I mean, we can go on and on about these things, you know, because it seems like those who are now there who are in this revamp NRP seem to forget about what the new NRP did and in the new new NRP and the new NRP before them because they're always changing the name. And that shows that the NRP cannot be trusted. They are not a serious party, they are not a stable party. And when people are looking for anyone to represent it, they're looking for seriousness. They're looking for a stable party. People with, uh, 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 you know, that metal and that, that drive to perform on their behalf. And when you look at the two parties, of course, people should not forget about the past history of the NRP. They have not done anything in this island to suggest to me that they're serious about governance and serious about representation. So I, I, I think I, we, 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 we're on the right track. I, I think, think for me what is even worse, gentlemen, is that the people who are out there now parading as NRP, mm -hmm. I think everybody knows CCM people. Precisely. Oh. <laughs> and that to me is just a joke. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, I saw some screenshots that people are sitting around. You know, young people now, I try to pretend that I'm young. Mm -hmm. So I get a screenshot something, you know, and 
They're talking about some of them who come in pushing up the face mm. and telling people about they're not paying. I mm. say, I go and buy a business. Mm. Because I'm a CCM, I have said and I will hold no water in my mouth to say that one vote I'm sure of in Brown Hill is Pat Bartlett. Mm -hmm. And you might get it this year too. No, I might. You know, you're telling me you don't use was that might, you know? One w vote I'm sure, what they call that? Well, Pat Shaw well, is my good, good, good CCM I, cousin. I was told by someone, the, the lady I brought in against voted for me in 2013. So maybe she'll but come for some vote for me again too. These were not people who had any <laughs> political whatever they yeah. just kind of what, what do you they kidney cap mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just kidney cap i mean how you can kidney cap from 20 years having no involvement with anything on this island to becoming the leader of a political party <laughs> what is your track record <laughs> come you have a song boy show me a trophy <laughs> what is when eric came and eric didn't call himself he was called mm -hmm. by the people of gingerland eric could point to all he did with empire sports club all he did with the seniors his role in the community so it was a natural choice when Eric go and Eric hug somebody, you know, got a question, mm -hmm. it's genuine. Sure. When you came, mm -hmm. you had served with AYPA, you had done cricket, you had done I so much. President, pre -open right? but, but when I came, there was nothing that ever Open. happened in Brown Hill that me and sponsor. Uh, yes. <sighs> nothing, cricket, football, you name it. I had a presence on radio. Mm -hmm. I do free legal work for people. Mm -hmm. Right? You got people in this country here at university. I assisted. I assisted people in so many cities. You don't talk about it in terms of calling people names, because right. that's not our way. Right. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, we had a basis for entering into politics. So people mm -hmm. say, "Well, I know Eric, I know Alexis." And when I'm to hear that the leader of NRP didn't even know who the tree house in she street belong to mm. <laughs> someone after told, 20 years so what uh, she came by their house right in the same neighborhood well no cross the pasture they live all the time you don't know you live here but that's the point <laughs> i mean i can't understand and if that is what right? people think are uh, those are who people think should represent her Bradley, you know the lady running against you dr bartlett my I want, cousin i want to She's know cousin. if pat can tell me one person or one young lady she would have empowered encouraged to go abroad to study veterinary um veterinary services or vet to become a, a veterinarian if she can name one person i'll be i'll give her some commendation because when we talk about empowerment of women or men or whatever the case might be in this case women talk a good game about empowerment of women but not even one not even one but I, I won't go there because it's, it's not an yeah, issue yeah, for me. But I, I just brought it up because yeah. sometimes we talk a good game behind this microphone. Eh? But when it's all said and done, talk is one thing. And you always hear Webo, um, the owner of the station, say talk that get results. Yes. And that's what we look for in this party. Of course. We talk and we get results yeah. of our talk. So I just want to tell you all that I will not be engaging yeah. in any kind of bashing <laughs> right. of my family who voted for me. Okay. <laughs> you need to vote still. still. You need to vote still. still. I like okay. that. Okay. Patricia, I'm <laughs> talking to you. Thank you for your support over the years. <laughs> and I look forward to your vote. I want you to be the first person going to vote in Brownhill. <laughs> right. You say you say you don't want to bash, but probably that is why she says she don't want a portfolio because you don't know you're not going to win. So he <laughs> okay. does that. It is two minutes to the hour. We're going to play that, that tape. We have it. And the reason I want to play this is because this is Sir Simeon Daniel, our national hero. And I'm very proud of the fact that his relationship with me as mentor was such that he was moved to endorse me. But the endorsement aside for the moment, I am playing it because I want new visions, young and old, to listen to the message that Sir Simeon is saying to us, even now, so many years after he has passed mm -hmm. to the great beyond. This is a voice from history speaking to the Nivision people. And so if you close your ears for a moment, because I recognize many of you do not support the CCM and support Mark Bentley. Close your ears for the moment about the endorsement of Mark Bentley and just listen to the message that Sir Simon is sending to our people about who we are and what we must do as Nivisions. I have known the Honorable Mark Bentley for all of his life. He always strives for excellence and he has been successful in most of his endeavors. He has one of the best legal minds in the Caribbean. Some people hate or jealous him for that. He does not fear criticism from his peers or those who try to emulate him but cannot attain. He is a role model for young divisions. I am certain that he will use his skill and education to preserve the legacy which our forefathers have bequeathed to us. And these are honesty, 
self-worth, industry, and an independent mind. To the young people of Mavis, I urge you to protect and defend what your forefathers have achieved for you. Support the Honorable Mark Brantley, and he will make sure of that. You are just as equal as everybody else, and those who would try to tell you otherwise, you know they are not for you. Why should you go to school, pass the same exams, and be treated as below other people when you have the tools in your hands to remedy the situation? There are four things that come that back. The spoken words, the sped arrow, the spent life, and the neglected opportunity. The young divisions and all the divisions who have been in this struggle do not neglect your opportunity. The new NRP has downgraded us to mendicants. Vote for the man who will protect our constitution. Vote for the man who is fearless and who will not become a political pygmy. Vote for the best. Vote for the Honorable Mark Grant. Well, there is the national hero. I think all of us, whatever our political persuasion, can accept that this is the father of Nevis and send into my mind a message. As I said, forget about the Mark Brantley part. I'm proud of that. But a message about Nevis and Nevisions. Somebody said to me here that this election is about how we see ourselves as Nevisions. Are we for sale? Are we persons who, whoever in Bas dear, send us the script? We just recite that. I mean, it's not as if the people were going are around. Are we proud Nevisions? Well, but these are important questions to ask. It is not as if the people who are going around are saying hippie for for NRP. We don't know them. We don't know the path they've traveled. We don't know the, 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 the monies that have been paid. We are aware. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I had to fool them. I had mm -hmm. to fool. A lot of them have collected and paid off bills and paid off this and that so that they're now here. And going around now and they're the biggest NRP. Those in the NRP cannot... And I emphasize, cannot utter one word. Imagine my good CCM cousin, Pat, is going to say that fear sheer is a fake issue. <laughs> it's a fake issue. And she never hear nothing about no billion dollars in sink kits. She only want to hear about the 400 million. It mm. tells me that Pat is not the here. The 5 ready. point something billion part of, it, of the money which belongs to us. That, so how could you not want to hear about it? She's interested in that. Because, you see, to be interested in that, is to say to Timothy Harris, what you're doing is wrong. Mm. And they cannot, and I challenge all the listeners at home and abroad tonight to listen to every NRP meeting. I really don't. That doesn't matter to me. And if you ever hear a single word critical mm -hmm. of Timothy Harris, then you call me and you tell me. They cannot. Mm -hmm. Because the very candidates were selected in last year. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. talking about what I hear, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about mm -hmm. what I know. Mm -hmm was selected in Boston when we hear an NRP who I consider to be a Nivision and should be a proud Nivision say our economic philosophy is Timothy Harris <laughs> but that is the comment you get when you've been bought and paid for Amen bought and paid for and I am so proud gentlemen let me tell you I <laughs> always tell people when they predict and thing I say listen I am not making a prediction politics is what it is if the people of number nine tell me go and go sit down, mm -hmm. I go and go sit down. And they won't. Well, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. If that's what they do, mm -hmm. then that's what they do. Because their voice is the voice of God. I respect that. But one thing I'm so proud of the CCM party for, that I can with absolute confidence say that none of us is for sale. You can shut your eye and say that. With absolute confidence I can say none of us is for mm -hmm. sale and that is what Nevis needs of course Nevis needs representation that will not be swayed or I'll give a little money or you know let me tell you something <laughs> I, 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 I need to let people know what's going on you know you know when all this thing erupted after the PAM convention when emissaries came to me from Sinkets mm -hmm. from Timothy Harris you know mm -hmm. what they came to say man don't worry about the money mm -hmm. we're gonna give you some more money uh -huh. We're going to give you some more money. Mm -hmm. As if the issue of being fair to the people of Nevis was merely a political issue that Chomark and mm -hmm. CCM and NIA, a few more dollars, and they didn't hush them up. And it's <laughs> this, this few more dollars would still not have represented we can't represent our share. 
he doesn't represent can't but, represent but also maybe they thought they would have gotten through with that with others ah, but, but, that, but, but that is the point because maybe they, no yeah. not maybe yeah. they have got through <laughs> with others yeah because mm -hmm. you pay off a bill there and mm -hmm. you pay and you become mm -hmm. the economic mm -hmm. philosophy Philo <laughs> but 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 back to the, the clip you played, Brantley. Um, Dr. Daniel would have. Uh, I'm just going to paraphrase, praise, uh, paraphrase, sorry, and, and make this statement that he would have said something to the effect that why should Navisions mm -hmm. go abroad and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. educate themselves and come back and be seen in less than anyone else, and that is why part of the uh, Charleston Accord uh, would have actually spoken to Navisions being on federal boards. Nivisions representing this country in, in different uh, embassies and consulates abroad. Yeah? And, and, and they were able to do so under this CCM, PAM, mm -hmm. PLP uh, partnership. Never before. Never before had any one of our citizens been posted anywhere in any embassy anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we were able to see that happen under the CCM along with the partners we had. And for that, we must be commended because, like we said, we had a, a Minister of Foreign Affairs here um, in the federal government mm -hmm. before, Patrice. Mm -hmm. Not one soul probably posted somebody in New York to start to mobilize votes. I don't know. But in terms of, uh, 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 what, what do you call it, ambassadors, never before under the NRP in any union in St. Kitts. Mm -hmm. and, and when we speak and we said Nevis first and Nevisions first, uh, that is putting your money where your mouth is. Of course. And that is action speaking louder than words. We say we'll do it and we have done it. And that is why I'm so proud to be. I always say it all the time. This blue that I have on, I will clad myself in blue any day because this is the color that represents mm -hmm. stability. It represents something that is always germane to the issue here in Nevis, and that is putting Nevis first, front and center in everything. Amen. It is <coughs> just seven minutes past, but let me, because I ought to have done it at the top of the show, apologize for not also mentioning the passing of Harvey Stapleton, mm. also known oh, yes, to us Pumpy. all as Pumby, Pumby Boy. Uh, Harvey was an iconic figure in the country. He used to boast to me about he was the only person who ever taken 10 wickets in a single innings in a cricket match, which he achieved. And I believe that we all knew his struggles and his challenges. And ultimately, he would have succumbed in tragic circumstances because of those challenges. My lesson from Harvey's life really is to say to all of us, we need to do more to care for each other. We need to look out for each other. We need to ensure that those of us in the community that need help get that help and that we don't scorn or shun people because we really don't know sometimes what people are dealing with. And so I wanted to mention that before the show was over and to extend my deepest condolences to his family, my good friend and cousin Stucky, who you know I grew up around, grew up with. You know, I tease him all the time because a lot of the little things I learned, I learned from him. I didn't have a brother, so you know he became sort of my big brother. But to the entire family and to the entire Brown Hill and cricketing community and the island of Nevis generally. I last at Pumbi at a match that they had at the cricket ground in Brownhill. Mm. And as usual, he walked around giving advice to everybody and, you know, he fancied himself as probably the best cricketer in the West Indies, not even Nevis, West Indies had produced. So I just wanted, before the show was over, to remind us all that we have lost Harvey Pumbi Boy Stapleton and to extend our deepest condolences to his family as well. I wanted to join with you, Mark, as well, as well, of course, as the Minister of Sports, because, of course, you know that he was an excellent cricketer mm -hmm. and, you know, an um, ardent fan of, of cricket and sports in general. And um, I know he would have made a sterling contribution to cricket on the island of Nevis. I know um, one of the recent tournaments was named in his honor. Mm -hmm. And so um, he would have done a lot for, the, for, for, for cricket on Nevis. Uh, and as the Minister of Sports, I also want to extend condolences to his family and apart from that he would have frequented my office because he has one here and one of the ladies in my office were very close so Pompey Boy was there I don't think a week ever passed by and he was not there maybe two or three times per week I uh, you know so I would have seen him very very often there at my office so and um, always had something good to say sometimes some little encouraging word you know so I just want to extend condolences to his entire family as well and I too want to join both of you in expressing my condolences condolences as well and uh, uh, we all knew Harvey well and he was an iconic figure 
uh, as a matter of fact, many of us would have seen him walking from Brown Hill to Charlestown and back, and perhaps that is something that all of us may uh, try to do from time to time, mm -hmm. is do a lot of walking, because he seemed as though he was fit like a fiddle. And of course, he was an, an excellent cricketer, of course. And he's the father of Lionskin, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so Lionskin would have gotten some of that talent because he also is a, an excellent um, left arm leg spin bowler. I've played against, you, you know, Lionskin. But Harvey, of course, um, would have made his mark. And indeed, you're, you're, you're so right, um, uh, Mark, that uh, uh, in, in Harvey there are some examples that we, sh we should look towards and also uh, care for each other uh, as well because uh, many times we'll say all of the nice things now that persons are gone, mm -hmm. but while they, they were on earth, we didn't do as best as we could have, uh, as good as we should have done towards them. And that is why we should be our brother's keeper, love one another. This this island is too small for us to be too adversarial and uh, neglecting one another. We should not be doing that. And that is why uh, these examples are what we should always try to uh, look to, to uh, better ourselves and better the community that we so love and, and so embrace. Well, it's interesting because, you know, in between, um, your gentleman speaking, I've been consulting because many people message me, mm -hmm. and um, this uh, very strong division in in New York sent me a message, and he said, "The great U.S. of A., the so-called richest nation on earth, was brought to its knees as a result of the COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. and they are still struggling." Mm -hmm. Are people aware of the corners you all had to cut to keep the ship of Nevis from sinking? And I think, you know, when I get comments like these, I recognize that, listen, people are listening and people understand. It is 12 minutes past here of 9 o'clock. We can't have on the mark without some calls. Mm -hmm. So let me open the, the lines and see if anybody out there wants to talk to us. I have with me this evening the Honorable Alexis Jeffers, proud representative of the people of number 11, St. Thomas's and St. James. The Honorable... Eric Rohan Evelyn, they call him the mayor of Hanley's Road, he's a proud representative of St. George Gingerland, and uh, I'm here, yours truly, Mark Brantley, the proud representative since 2007, I might add, I feel very proud of that, because I've been there now for 15 years, representing the good people of St. John's and St. Paul's. Let's go to the phones then and allow the public to hear their views. Good evening, you're on the mark. The sheriff, good night. My dear, how are you? Give God thanks. Yes. Proverbs 29, verse 22 and 23. An angry man stirred up strife, and a furious man abounded in transgression. A man pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Good night to the men. Good night to the three CCM. Good night. Good night, QT. Good night. Yeah. Good to hear you. Good Thank you very much. Night. Thank you. And that is why I, I, I like QT, because she always comes with a scripture of her choosing. But you see, she's talking about anger, and you're in a lot of anger, and you want to know why people are so angry, because they can't get a hand on Eva's treasure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the phones. Okay, we've lost that caller. Call us 869-469-1616. 869-469-1616. Let's go right back. Good evening. You're on the mark. Yes, good night, Mr. Blantley. Good night to you. And good night to Mr. Jefferson in particular. Mm -hmm. Good night, I'm good night. I'm calling from St. Kitts. Yes, sir. I believe, I refer to Mr. Jefford most in, importantly, I believe Mr. Jefford should be leading you all because of a situation that took place that what I believe that once divided St. Kitts and Navy. The 1st of August, 1970. Christina sunk. How much citizens and Navy's parents went down in that boat? How much money came in for those young children? How much did they receive? I believe Mr. Jeffrey that the elder, if you understand what's coming from it. Hello? Yes, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to you. As Mr. Jeffrey that the elder should be expounding who when NRP was created wasn't that one of the best in situation when Mr. Patrick Nisbet was a part of the federal administration what happened so this thing happening to Nivijon long before and Nivijon being balling 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 said more than CBI money 
We are you. Mm. If you understand what I'm yes. speaking of, I hear you. I'm a mm-hmm. But if the shoe was on the other foot, I would not have liked it. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Carla, go ahead. And it, it, Mr. Franklin, I'm going to give you my number because I want to talk to you. I mean, I want to talk to you on the radio. Well, don't give me yours. Let me give you mine. No, I don't give you mine. No, everybody can call you. <laughs> me, me, listen to me. Be not afraid. You're not afraid? I am a bad. I am a bad. <laughs> you sound like a real division, even though you're from Zinket. <laughs> what? Go ahead. What's your number, sir? 668. Write it down there for me, Alex. 668. 2555. Two five. I want to come near to the, to the two for club with me and if we get to come in because it's political <laughs> turmoil, you know. Okay, we're going to have to talk about that. I'll give you a call, okay? It's expect- good that you're saying because the Minister of, of, of Culture is here. <laughs> I would expect that. All right, thanks a million. Let me just, gentlemen, before we go back to the phones and respond to the callers that we've had thus far, extend our heartfelt congratulations to our new youth, CCM Youth Executive, the president, Ms. Nikesha Henry, a young lady I always tease and call her Madam Prime Minister because mm-hmm. I think she has a bright future. Vice President, the very capable Emorian Grant. The Secretary Treasurer, lovely Kaseya Manners. And, of course, our Public Relations Officer, Briandra Leibert. I always encourage Briandra to be a lawyer. That's, but that's Brem's daughter. Brem daughter. Yes. Mm-hmm. I always encourage her to be a lawyer, but it looks to me like mm-hmm. she's in the medical field now. But mm-hmm. I really want to send kudos to Nikesha as President Imoyan as Vice President, Secretary Treasurer Kaseya Manners, and Public Relations Officer Briandra Leibert. And to say that we have young women stepping up, I want to also extend thanks to the previous executive in under the leadership of Mr. Jeremy and Atherton mm-hmm. for the work that they would have done and to see that here's CCM progressing, making the necessary changes, having an election and this new executive emerging. And so we look forward to seeing what the youths yes. are going to do. I know they have a lot of projects that are planned. Mm-hmm. We're taking a call, 869. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Mark, how you do? I am well, thank you. This is Talk Puppy, Talk Dog from St. Kate. Mm. Um, I stayed here, and I'm so proud of you all and Nevis with the work that you all have done. But I believe I heard tonight that on many occasions, I want to make sure I have it right. On many occasions, Eric Evelyn tried to bring peace in the so-called unity that we had. Yes, that is correct. Eric Evelyn in the cabinet was a peacemaker. And he, I believe it was back in February, if I recall, Mm -hmm. passionately made the case for some kind of retreat. That retreat never happened. Wow. Well, no wonder last week while I was in Nevis, a group of people told me that he was actually forced in politics. What a thing. I love you all, and and you all will succeed. We have a lot of problems in saying it's because Timothy Harris is using the power of money to frighten our people. But don't worry, I'm going to calm them down. But this is what amazed me, Mark, that the Governor General in this country has threatened to take me to court, and I'm willing to go. Why? Defending democracy in terms of telling the Governor General, you made very poor decision. Now, Mark, I want to tell the Governor on your show, if people don't want to be in public service and perform the way they're supposed to perform, do they expect that they would not be criticized with it like a man like me? I'm Martin Luther King for saying it. I'm not afraid of anybody and anyone take a public office in saying it or need this. And they're not performing, I'll just tell them off. So I was reliably informed that the governor general is taking me, is going to take some action about me. But I just want him to know on your station, I am ready and people in St. Kitts must learn to stand up to anybody for their rights and continue to listen to you all. All right. Well, uh, you know, it's interesting. I will not get into a debate about the Governor General. But what I found is interesting is somebody sent me a clip of Timothy Harris saying, he just went to the Governor General with one blow, he get rid of six of them. And beating his chest that he, as he said, with one blow, get rid of six of them. But who are the six? Mm-hmm. 
the six are proud representatives of people. You know? Amen. We were not nominated, you know. Mm. We were elected by people to go and represent them. So when you get rid of the six, you also get rid of the people of Sandy Point. The people of number four, Lord, challengers. You got rid of the people of number two. You got rid of the people of St. Thomas's and St. James and the mm -hmm. people of St. John's and St. Paul's and the people of Gingerland. But you see, this is the problem that I have. That you can now use this absence of strength that we would have seen displayed. And the absence of strength can be translated otherwise. Weakness mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we would have seen. Mm -hmm. And bullied yourself through to the point where you're on a platform now saying, boasting that in one stroke you get rid of six. But the six could not get rid of one. And so the representative from number seven had more power than the representatives equally elected of all the other constituencies. Because remember, number one and number six but also not with him. And you see, this is sometimes, and so, you know, I empathize with what Mr. Dupont is saying because when we put ourselves in certain positions, we're not in some, some, some gilded cage where we are beyond reproach. All of us are human. A man reminded me that everybody put on their pants one leg at a time. Mm -hmm. Me, no, 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 I'd have put pin up my pants and jump in it. <laughs> well, everybody put on their shoes one leg at a time. And with all the accolades that we get in our life, it's ants waiting for us. Six feet, six inches. That is a certain path for all of us to walk and a certain ending that we... And so it is for us now to live a life in such a way that when it comes to that, people will say, well, Eric, you would have done well. Huh? You would have finished the race, you would have kept the course. You would have kept the faith. Mm -hmm. Because it is, it is important that we understand that when you're in public life, sometimes the things that people say about me, it hurts. But then you put yourself there. That's right. That's why it's called public life. And if you don't want people to question what you mm -hmm. do, then that is not the place for you. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello? Can Hello, I? good night. Yes, you're on the mark. Go ahead, please. Yes, Mr. Premier? Yes. Yes. Wow. To be honest, you have done some good work, but I don't feel you have done enough for the vision from the federal level and whatnot. The CCM party, I feel, have not done enough for the vision and from the federal level. I'm, I'm saying this is from the main talking point that we elected you was on the CSA issue. And to me, that was supposed to be resolved within the first three years or so in government. I don't think we should, it, it, it was supposed to be going so long to see seven years and the CSA issue was not resolved. And you were of the view, Carla, that I alone could have resolved it? You were not leader in 2015. I feel like the leader in 2015 could have done more, in my opinion. Because that was the main talking point for the system government. That's the, that was the main talking point for we to elect you into federal. Because we really wanted this to be resolved. Because too much way we and man talking there and this really was a disease. I thought it was resolved. But only come to hear that we were only getting budgetary support and not leave it as fair share. Then when we got leader in twenty seventeen I said, okay then this this thing will get resolved. One thing I'm sure about Marty and get this thing resolved. And five years later Two years later. It hasn't been done. Two years later, not five. In 2017, Mark was the leader? Yes, but I, I, I was still... <laughs> I was leader of the CCM on Nevis. <laughs> but recall, well, recall that I would not have become the leader in relation to our federal election that until that happened in 2020. 
That's when mm-hmm. Alexis and Eric would have joined me in Bastille. Yes. But I, 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 I get your point, Carla. Uh, and hold on. Yes, go ahead. Next thing, Mark, I want to commend you from one thing that you said, that I heard that you said as well, that you stood up in 2020 and you, you did not want to go back into the federal government unless this PSA issue was resolved. I want to say that that's what some of us stand up, but I feel, I honestly feel, you should have maintained your position and do not attend to, and do not go back, go back to past year until, not the chance on a card, until a bill or something has been <coughs> put into, put into parliament or whatnot to get this thing fully resolved. Because, to me, the chance on a card, that ain't gonna work. Because how I see some of these politicians, they don't sign these things outside, and when they get in, that's why now I said no way to prolong so you're saying we could we, we, you're saying we can't trust them that's what mm-hmm. you're saying mm-hmm. indeed no you okay. can't you mm-hmm. can't trust them at the end of the day okay mm-hmm. but well, if you put something into parliament and you we take a picture and what not so everybody knows okay then now come with this bill into parliament we want to see who can vote it down if you understand All right let me see who got the balls in parliament and in cabinet to vote it down okay all right. Okay. Well, Carla, I think your points are well made. Um, I it's interesting your call because I said prior to your call that none of us is above criticism. So I accept that. I accept that this fair share issue was an issue, but I do not wish the impression to be given that nothing happened because we used to get nothing at all. We went to two million a month, then three point seven five, then five point five. We went to three point seven five and five point five on the my watch as an interim measure. The truth is that when I became the leader of CCM in 2017, my first letter to Timothy Harris on this matter was in April of 2018. Oh. So I didn't tarry. I got on it right away. And that led to a number of exchanges and meetings, and Timothy Harris always committed to resolving this matter. But I soon realized that what he was doing is paying a little extra and say, well, hold that for now, while Mark, we get a chance. Mark, and so that was the position. Mark, yes. let, me, let me say one thing. He's a, he's a very conniving kind of person, you know. Well, he's a kind of conniving person. Yes, but I'm just person. speaking. I can't speak for him. I can speak for well, me. I, 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 feel, I feel, well, once you start to realize that was, that was happening, I would have, because... We all have each other's phone numbers in your phone and what that, all the ministers and what not. I would have drafted the bill and I call the leader of people that's a movement and call him and what that. Listen, look. I come in with this bill Monday. I need you to support me and what not. All right, caller. I understand what you're saying so, you would have done. Look, so, what I'm trying to say is that yes. we want to put the pressure on them. Let the public see that they're the ones right. who do. So, let, me, let the public see. Right. Okay. If Timothy Harris and Denzel Douglas don't want to vote on it, they're the ones who don't want me to get his PhD, okay. if you understand. Well, I understand what you're saying. I don't think we needed a vote to demonstrate that, though, because we have the evidence in front of us. But yes. thank, you, thank you for your point. I take your point. I'm simply so saying... Next time, next time, if you get into the government or whatnot, put that bill. I want the country to see. Now put this bill into parliament. I want to see... Which one out of the well? If you go with, if I only count in you, I only count in you. So if ten other politicians there, I want to see which one out of the ten do not vote on this. So if right. they don't vote on it, we know where we stand with them. Okay. If you understand. All right. Okay, caller. Uh, thank All you right very much. Then. Thank you very much for your contribution. I think sometimes that you know they say hindsight is twenty twenty. You know we all know when we watch. There's a concept in America they call Monday morning, Monday morning quarterback. Quarterback, yeah. Because you always know what the quarterback should have done on the Sunday game. When you watch cricket, you always say the field or sit bad. That's right. a problem. Even when you're playing, dom- you playing domino. Exactly. So <laughs> after the fact, it is always. But I think sometimes, caller, we need to appreciate that when you're in the midst of something and you're not seeking to mash it up, you're seeking to work and resolve. It is no secret that in 2020 we said we didn't want Timothy. 
I said plain. I gather he said so when he launched and he thought that he was giving people. I've been saying it consistently. We did not we did not want Timothy because I realize what Timothy was about. Timothy is about self and family and who he could use. And nobody was going to use me because I had at that point in 2020 had three years of engaging as the premier. And I recognize because as I say, and I know this, I say it as a bit of a light moment, but I say there's no kuno moon on my board paper. So when you're dealing with somebody and they tell you finance going to have to study the thing, but Hold this in the meantime. And you get a little uptick. Then you come back eight months later, what's happening? The report is almost complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll be in a position to discuss it. Nothing. You come back again. What's happening? Will COVID intervene? So that was a big issue. Because when COVID dropped in 2020, really and truly, all of that conversation mm -hmm. changed. Because mm -hmm. we were now talking about saving lives. Mm -hmm. So 2020 and 2021, really and truly, that issue took a back burner. I'm not even going to resign from that. We had a crisis that we were addressing. In 2022, I picked it up again early morning, January. What is happening? And I said, listen, you keep pushing off and pushing off. Instead of 3.75 a month, I want 5.5. Until. As interim. Interim until June. Mm. I said, until this month, June, because by June, I expected this matter to be finally resolved. And he dawdled and dawdled and came back and said, oh, he paying economic costs for students, he paying this, he paying that. I said, listen, give Nevis what belongs to Nevis. And we don't mind paying for our step workers and paying for what? Because we could design programs for Nevis. Mm -hmm. I know if I put a few million dollars in Eric's hand in social services, what he can do to transform lives. Of course. We don't need anybody in Bass to tell us about poor people and how we can help people. So I made a point. And it was a Saturday before the PAM convention on the Sunday that a policeman came from Singit. Mm -hmm. The man come with a little dog, I had a poodle, mm -hmm. and a letter. And say, them send this letter. And the letter said, okay, they're going to pay. Well, you think I should I know that money come, because that is how Timothy thinks. That, why are they going to go to PAM convention and say, you're going to change him out now, can mm -hmm. get little money? Mm -hmm. That's how he thinks. Mm -hmm. And I went to PAM convention and I said what I had to say, because I didn't tell any lies. And then thereafter, the 5.5 start to come, and then you start to hear about how much gener how generous he is and how much he has done for Nevis. So, Carla, I do not want it to be said that efforts were not made. Now, some have said, oh, why you didn't take a bill to the house? But again, when you dissect, 2017 December, I became <coughs> premier. 2018, 2019, I said that COVID has robbed us of two years. People don't like to hear it, but it's true. Yes. Because for 2020 and 2021, all this country was concerned about was saving lives from COVID. And then 2022 morning come all about and I said, listen, this is where things have to stop. And if you were prepared to do what was right, we wouldn't have any problem. We would not talk about bill and all of that, you know, because it was a simple agreement that everybody understands. Yes, yes. Let's go back to the phones and take some more calls. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello? Hello, you're on the mark. Caller, please go ahead. You're on the air. Hi. I, I think your argument regarding the fear share is a compelling one. And I don't think many fear-minded citizens would argue with you. The situation is, would, it be, would presenting a dossier of the communications you've made to the Prime Minister, would making that public um, make your case, take it out of the case of PSA, and put it into the realm of here's the evidence. Thank you. Well, Carla, I think that I agree with you. I have promised in the past to make these documents public, and I think that it's time that I just do that because I don't have anything to hide. The correspondence is there back and forth, and I will commit to making them available. But I will tell you that I think that people, if they're honest, know that when we speak in this party, we speak truth. We speak truth, and I will assure you, the Timothy Harris that I know. If we were not talking the truth, he would have done come with all mm -hmm. kind of cataflam. Mm -hmm. Right? I saw one of his uh, main people here in Nevis the other day. And he said something to me. Oh, you got your 66 million. And I had to stop him. I said, first of all, the increase that we got from January was supposed to last until June. The mere fact that you're talking about 66 million means that in Timothy's eye, this was now the long-term arrangement. I said, no. 
This was to stop in June because by June we should have had the proper arrangement in place. But call I agree with you to put the matter beyond doubt. I have no difficulty sharing that correspondence because I've sworn to up to it enough times that let the public see it for themselves and see the efforts that were made in writing. And thereafter, people will continue to say what they wish to say because as Alexis Jefferson says, some of them have a script and some cash in the envelope that came with the script. <laughs> so they understand what their job is. We are concerned about representing Nevis. And that, for me, is what is most critical at this point in time. It is 25 minutes to the hour. We're going to take some more calls. Good evening. You're on the mark. Hello? Good evening, sir. How are you? You're on the mark. Go ahead, please. Wonderful, Mark. I'm okay. Taking care, man. I see my good unit brother. You know, keep on getting before me. Mark, when the Lawrence for the ambassador to CARICOM, the OECS, and ACS. He resigned in 2015. Now, um... He said that to say what? I, I'm wondering. But go ahead, caller. Make your I point. Come, I, I come with history. When I come, I come with history. Yeah, make your point, caller. Go ahead. No, I would like to know. I would like you to, one these night, have the, have an, a past, um, uh, history of CCM. Let us know how CCM was formed and who was the founder. And I would like you to honor them, please. Um, you know, so that, because you see, CCM is a nice party. It's, it's going good. So let us honor our founders and so that we could give them some rec rec recognition. Mm -hmm. Now, in 1975, <coughs> the people of Nevis voted for a PAM seat and an NRP seat. That was the first election that we were in Nevis. Okay? So the people of Nevis has always looked for changes. Now, what I was thinking, ma'am, you speak about going to the Prime Minister for the CBI money. Um, wasn't cabinet the right place to go to because then cabinet would make that decision instead of the Prime Minister making that decision. Cabinet should have been the one making that decision. Cabinet didn't sign the Charleston Accord nor the Prime Minister did. Map, map the Charleston Accord mm -hmm. work for whom it suits and it doesn't work for whom it suits well. Well, but Carla, then you're supporting my point. You're basically yeah, that, that, saying, yeah, you're, you're, basically, your point, you're basically saying to the nation, therefore, that those three individuals who signed this document before God and man were dishonest. That's what your church suggested. Not the three individual, individual. I'm saying that all who signed the document should have realized that that is only a piece of paper to go into the government. Oh, well. I, all right. I, okay, I, God. I, 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 like that is your view, then it, it tells me that you put, you put, that, you put no I, value on integrity. I, I take oh, an affront. You put no value on integrity, Carla. Mm. So that's all right. Go ahead. The Constitution gave you the guideline how money should be shared. Okay? Call the constitution does not address CBI receipts. Stop with the but canard. It is a foolish back, argument. Back, yes. back whether the CBI or what? As long as it's revenue comes into saying it's a Nevis, it's saying it's a Nevis revenue. Call it should be put in the treasury. Call her, call her, call her. You cannot argue football if you don't understand the rules. No, you don't okay? No, but you don't understand and you're not prepared to listen. Mark, I am, you are, you are, I am saying to you. What are you saying? I am saying to you. That the CBI money go into cabinet or parliament and, this, and, 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 and resolve it. You write on a piece of paper that could go into a garbage. It's a piece of paper you Okay, alright, call Caller, I do not agree with you because I think there's something called integrity that we well, as leaders no, should have. No, no, and if you have none, if you have none, caller, that is okay. No politician. But that is not how we choose to live in the CCM. Alright? So. No politicians have integrity. Well, alright. Well, caller, this is. I mean, listen. No wonder UNEP has died, because if you were the mm. fact bearer for UNEP, I could understand. Because you are telling me integrity in public life doesn't matter. And that's something that Eric, Alexis, and I commit to doesn't matter. Then something is wrong with you. That's not a reflection on us, that's a reflection on you. So I can now understand why UNEP has been buried. Of Springfield, and I hope you're not uh, referring uh, to them anymore when you're calling as, as UNEP. Gentlemen. Brandley, if, yes. I, if I may say... Um, when, when we campaign, we, we put together a manifesto, of course. for example. Mm -hmm. right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? This is an extension of that. What is so difficult for people to understand? Everybody talk about going to parliament and mm -hmm. doing this and doing that. Listen, we were being guided by it. There are other things that came out of the Charleston Accord mm -hmm. that worked. Mm -hmm. Why this main issue of, of fear share and our parata share? Is, is not being addressed or was not addressed uh, that should not have been an argument at this point in time and I heard someone from the NRP you know the young lady there who's gonna run in Charleston there say how come no other party or the NRP wasn't involved in that how you could involve NRP in, in, in team unity things 
when NAP is writing a manifesto and coming up with the agreement with Labour Party, we are not a part of it. Remember, they signed it in the dead of night. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the craziness I'm hearing, but anyway, let me be, let me be a bit severe. And it's unfortunate, <laughs> and you, you see, these are the kind of things why everybody always paints all politicians with a broad mm -hmm. brush. And it's unfortunate, because some of us have integrity and credibility. <laughs> but oh, this yeah. caller is implicitly admitting. That as far as he concerned, Timothy Harris don't have any credibility and integrity. Because that's what people, it's, it's like a saying, okay, this is what we're going to do, but you know, oh, you didn't legislate it, so I think. Call it the same, Charleston O'Call is what made Timothy Harris Prime Minister. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So it was good for that. <laughs> you know, and then there's this, this bogus argument about cabinet. Every cent that Nevis has got. From CBI. Never Which went. of it went to cabinet? Never went to cabinet. That's the one I started. We got 2 million when Vance was there. We got 3.75 when I took over per month. We got 5.5 .5 now that I'm still there. Mm -hmm. Which of those went to now cabinet? All that was through communication. Through communication yeah. with the Minister of Finance. So I don't understand this argument now that oh, oh, it's this the only cabinet. And he himself made the foolish argument. Mm. And he started, you know, mm. so he said, well, if none come to cabinet, how come mm. you sign off on this money? Are mm -hmm. you admitting that he acted without authority? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the phones. Good evening, you're on the mark. Hello? What up, you, man? How are you, night, guy? The night is going well. Go ahead, please. And good night to you, 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 your fellow ministers. They're all I are doing. Good night. We're doing pretty good, thanks. Good. Well, good thanks. I just say to uh, good night to you, listeners, by the way, you're in the We'd like to ask one simple question. That three you are looking to continue from the Navy's end, and you all do get the election on board within the, your victory, we are all able to table what you are not able to post to as the charge to acquire in the constitution? Well, of course, we can table most and many things. Uh, but most of the time, legislation comes because legislation is discussed in the cabinet, and the cabinet decides on a legislative agenda. That is how legislation comes. So, again, there is this argument about what went to parliament and what didn't go to parliament. I, in opposition, introduced integrity in public life. I introduced freedom of information. Was it debated? Did it ever come to the parliament? No. So, Carl, I just think that we are giving a pass. We're giving a free pass to people who acted dishonorably and without integrity. If you say, yes, the man is crooked, and then you say, but in addition to that, you should have done this. Mm -hmm. belts and I could at least understand that. But too much of the argument is about what CCM did wrong. And not looking at the fact that we thought that we were dealing with people with integrity and acted accordingly. And in any relationship, call if you ever had a, a girlfriend or wife, you get involved with her and you figure you will act with honor and integrity and you expect her to do the same. Don't be worried if you realize why that is not the case. You maybe you try your counseling. You go to the elders, you try and work it out, but if you don't work out, what happened? And I don't well, understand well, what I is so that. hard. What is so hard in the country for people to understand simple things? Well, I would like to say this here now tonight, you know, yeah. my, um, Brother Premier and Brother Ministers who you have in, your, in the studio of Van Radio, mm. you all need to take the, a real serious a step between how you all are presiding in making sure that you are say, putting Nevis first and making the emphasis of safeguarding Nevis people in the way they're supposed to safeguard. Now, if it's not like that, in many sense, you have make them cry there because a lot of people don't put talk, but when it's action, you don't have a it. So all I'm saying, please make sure I do the action for the people of Nevis and yeah. even to the whole entire federation of things that Nevis and a whole. Because we can be divided and feel like we're going to get things done. You all have a safe night. All right, brother. Thank you very much. We have 15 minutes left, colleagues. Are uh, we have anybody holding? So, colleagues, mm -hmm. hand the floor over to you. <laughs> okay. Well, just, just to go back to something you spoke about earlier, um, Premier, regarding the, the, the numbers when it came to employment um, over 2021, 2022, which were some uh, interesting numbers that mm -hmm. point to mm -hmm. 
uh, progress in Nevis. Of course. Because all the time you hear nothing happening and the people seem to uh, see and don't want to see. And if you take a stick and hit them in their face, they'll say it wasn't a stick, it was a, uh, <laughs> a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, these numbers are interesting numbers and they're numbers to suggest to me that the economy here in Nevis is, is, is sticking in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, one of the things that could be driving some of these numbers is construction. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, construction is, is is booming here on the island of Nevis. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if you drive from, let's say, Newcastle to Charlestown or uh, go towards Ginger, you may not see some of these construction sites, but they are out there. Uh, I believe, uh, based on the numbers we saw earlier today, uh, they are about 100 and, uh, is it 166? Active, active construction exactly. site mm -hmm. and the Nevis Housing and Development Corporation is contributing to that as well too. As a matter of fact, we'll be searching for some contra contractors and, and all of them seem to be busy mm -hmm. and occupied and I want to commend uh, all of the persons involved who have played a part from planning. Well, it's this thing starts with the uh, concept conception stage in drawing and putting plans together, getting into planning, getting out, out of planning. But when once construction is booming, then it means that there is a, a rippling effect through the economy because, of course, weekly, uh, there is a lot of uh, material th that are procured. Uh, people get their paycheck on a, on a Friday. Those monies are spent at the shops and the bars, supermarket, pay your bills. And it is just uh, an exciting thing once construction is, is, is on the rise. And construction definitely is playing a major part. And indeed, today, and I'll get those figures as well, we looked at some other exciting figures as well. In 2020, when we realized that the economy was pretty much dormant because of COVID, we looked for areas in which we can mm -hmm. stimulate some activity in the economy and we looked to the real estate market because we understood what could come out of that in the sense that properties were on the market to be sold and you know once things are difficult people would stay away from buying as a result but we were able to stimulate some sales and based on the global figure that I saw today over 108 million dollars worth of property change hands we were not saying how we stimulate the sales you know we were oh. able to stimulate it by policy by policy yes. us, of course <laughs> okay. that's important that we the public need to understand Good. what this cabinet did exactly mm -hmm. yeah uh, and, and you as the minister of finance you can expound on mm -hmm. that yes but I was just trying to look at some of the sure, things that we have sure, done sure. when people are saying well not people but those on the other side who have been sleeping and in a slumber for a long time and just wake up 20 years. Uh, the 20 years and say mm. nothing is happening i'm telling you that we would have sat down as a cabinet and that was uh, because of discussions you'd have had with the stakeholders mm -hmm. uh the realtors and so forth here on the island and looked at ways of getting some of these properties moving and uh, we came up with this policy that we will forego some of the revenue that could be collected from uh the sale of these properties you know most of these properties uh once they're sold to uh, someone who was not born here they have to acquire what is called an alien land holding license plus they have to pay 10 percent 10% of the, the cost of that property, we would have foregone go on that. Uh, and that is, which means if, for example, $108 million worth of properties uh, change, and it means that 10% of that was, was uh, not collected at the Treasury. And that is a significant amount of money. That's about $10.8 million, I believe. I mean, my mm -hmm. maths might be on and off a little bit, but about $10.8 million. That's a lot of money to, to um, at least, you said, didn't make it into the Treasury so that it can be used for social programs and other programs that are, uh, are being done by the NIA. But the point I'm trying to make is that by us implementing that policy, we would have seen a lot of properties that might have been dormant or sitting down around here and uh, getting into a state of disrepair. They were able to change hand and that also is part of the construction mm -hmm. boom that we are seeing in that repairs had to be done. Renovation. New owners come in and new owners have a different thinking and some are adding swimming pools and mm -hmm. that kind of thing to their property. It is an exciting time here in Nevis and we are seeing the impact of sensible thinking and sensible action on the part of the Nevis Island administration led by your CCM party. And the good thing about it is, I mean, gentlemen, we always have the facts and the figures and the data. Mm -hmm. And data don't lie. That is the evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason why the construction is booming is because we removed the duties and the VAT and, the, and, and all of that. And mm -hmm. we said to young people, especially if you're going to build something, once you're spending over 30,000 EC dollars in Nevis, you get everything duty free. Duty free. Mm -hmm. And that has people have said, what? This is a significant saving. Let me jump on it. And so we have now, as you say, 166 construction sites on the Zidlilan active. If you multiply 166 <laughs> and you say an average, 
you have five people on each side. You realize you're talking, what, 800 construction mm -hmm. workers mm -hmm. going out every day and sure. making a dollar? There's mm -hmm. somebody on the line holding still? Okay, we're going to ask them to call again. 869-469-1616 and one seven. So what is important, though, Brandt, is for us to get our message out and not let someone dictate what is to be said because if you let them dictate what is to be said out there then of course that's why you'll have all this confusion well, Alexis, you know yeah. i look and people say oh this and that about us you know we have led this federation of innovation you know? of course you know i hear <laughs> timothy harris had meeting with the guyanese and started to talk about higgum grant amnesty and work permitting mm -hmm. You know, we did that in 2015. We did that again in 2018. We did it again in 2020. In Nevis, to help the international community. All the time that he was there as prime minister, mm -hmm. he never had no interest in that. Mm -hmm. But the people in Nevis, and that is why some nationals have called me and said, why well, are you going to do anything? I said, listen, remember that this is a government here in Nevis that has partnered with everybody in Nevis. And we provided amnesty in 2015, again in 2018, mm -hmm. and again in 2020. And I believe some details are going to come across. Just today we took a decision mm -hmm. in the cabinet. But I want people to understand the difference between substance and mm -hmm. fluff. Mm -hmm. Because we are not just coming to people now. We have said, for example, that the unfortunate development of withdrawing economic costs from our students studying at U, mm -hmm. that that cannot be right. You all know that there are a lot of Nivision students who went off to UE with the expectation mm -hmm. that the economic costs would be paid. And the, the work was pulled from under them. We have said, listen, early o'clock when we get in, we have to restore that position. Mm -hmm. Young people are borrowing money from Development Bank. And I made something on Facebook. And I see all kind of people coming oh, with yes. Cataflam. Yeah. Development Bank website still says 9%. But let's not focus on that. Development Bank last year said they will reduce student loans to 6%. But only for new loans. Mm. So if Eric, you had a loan... Mm -hmm. A car you went to school five years ago. I'm stuck with that. I spoke to a young lady today in the United States. She told me next month is her last payment. Mm -hmm. And that young lady has been out of school now, I'm sure, for probably about 20 years, maybe more. So her last payment, and only now at her age, in her 40s, she now saying she got to look now about buying a home. Because the student debt was killing her. It is unconscionable that Development Bank is funded with our taxpayer money. And people got to borrow money at 13% and 11% in order to go to school when we should be investing. So we have said, listen, once we get there, no more than 5% on mm -hmm. student loans. And all of those student loans that already exist, they must come down to the 5%. Mm -hmm. Because I don't understand how you only give a new loan at 6 But somebody who took it in 2020, who's still in school, they must pay 9 And somebody who took it five years prior must pay 13 these are some of the things that are my mind. I know somebody came and said, oh, well, why are you only now saying that? I said, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. When political parties come to people, they lay out their platform. They say, this is what we propose to do. And that is the way this works. And we are making commitments that we feel our people can understand and appreciate. And our young people especially. We must make it easier for them. We have somebody holding? Okay. Okay, let me just make a couple of quick announcements because time is running out. Um, tomorrow night, the Big Blue Machine will be in Craddock Road at, uh, um, is, it, is it the Mango Tree Bar? Mango, yeah. Yes, Mango. we'll be in Craddock Road tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. So please, we're asking you to be present. And of course, uh, those of you who can't present, be present, we're asking you to listen via Von Radio and online. And then on Sunday, Sunday is Father's Day. Sunday the 19th of June and so um, your caring CCM party we have planned a special function for the fathers and that function will be held at, at, at Party Central Caribbean Cove starting around 6 o'clock we're going to have excellent um, entertainment for you we're going to have eat some drinks so please fathers of Nevis we're asking you to come out in your numbers and enjoy a wonderful evening with your caring CCM party the concerned citizens movement we did a wonderful function for the mothers mm -hmm. down at the Malcolm Gishad Recreational Park but we decided that we have to do something for the fathers as well so fathers you are welcome to come out all the fathers on the island come out and be a part of this wonderful activities 
pla activity planned especially with you in mind i'm gonna just change gears a little bit now and talk just a little bit about culture drama because on uh, of course the days and the weeks and the months are flying fast and you know we are back with a bang for culture drama they say our normal culture drama they say we are back we had a hiatus last year we had to go virtual and it went well but we are back with our normal festival this year and this coming friday the 17th of of june we have the virtual launch of the festival that will be taking place at the malcolm gishard recreational park and of course that of course that will be going li live stream as well and so we're going to be actually having the media launch we're going to be releasing the jingle um we're going to be uh, naming the patron um some um, sponsorship checks will be handed over there and we're going to be having a lot more information for you regarding the festival so that takes place at the malcolm gishard park on friday then on Saturday this will be an exciting event that I know a lot of persons would wish to come to we have the reveal of our contestants taking part in the various pageants for Culturama the reveal will be taking place at the David Freeman Center of Excellence in the heart of Gingerland and that is happening on Saturday night so on Saturday night the the big blue machine will forego our, our political meeting we won't be having our political meeting we're gonna go to the David Freeman Center of Excellence to support the contestants and our persons are waiting with bated breath as to who the contestants are and so if you want to see who the contestants are taking part in the Mr. Cool the Miss Culture Swimwear the Miss Culture pageant the talented youth pageant please come to the David Freeman Center of Excellence on Saturday it's a small fee of just ten dollars to get you in and so we're asking you to come out in your numbers to see who the contestants are and start supporting your favorite contestant mm -hmm. and so please that will be happening at the david freeman center of excellence come saturday so once again tomorrow night we'll be at um Craddock road big blue machine sunday evening sunday night from about six from the evening from about six o'clock um fathers you're invited to to the caribbean cove on friday we will be at the malcolm gishard park at 10 o'clock for the media launch of culturama and then on saturday night we will be from around six so we will be at the david freeman center for the reveal of the contestants well you have said it all and i certainly endorse all that you said i think that this is a party that has demonstrated it cares. And we are going to have a grand time with our fathers on Sunday. And of course, we look forward to this big reveal. That's what everybody's talking about. Also to the media launch. And also to the big blue machine being in Karakur tomorrow evening. I would want to thank all of those who have been coming out to the meetings. But we understand CCM. <laughs> we understand our party. And many have called to say, listen, we're waiting for the bell to ring. And we're waiting for our new blue clothes. I want to show everybody <laughs> that the new blue clothes are here. We have rag, whistle, we have everything you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And we will be handing that out shortly. But we're just waiting. You know, somebody said that Timothy Harris had some shinding yesterday. And I said, one question. Did he ring the bell? Mm -hmm. Did he give the date? They said, no. I said, let me know. I hear nothing else. Because mm -hmm. that is really all that people are interested sure. in now. What is the date for the election? And night you run till morning, catch them, and I'm telling you, night is running. <laughs> night is running. <laughs> so it's only a matter of time now that the date has to come. And I believe that once that comes, we will do what we need to do to ensure that the saints go marching in. Gentlemen, we have about two minutes left. Alexis Jeffers, what would be your wrap up in 30 seconds? My wrap up is just uh, to thank you, uh, Premier, for inviting me here this evening. I do thank the general public, home and abroad, for listening to this show this evening. I had a wonderful time there. So much we can say and so much more to be said that we'll continue tomorrow evening up there at uh, Mango Chibar, Bath, and Bath. And uh, come and hear us and we'll continue the dialogue then. Well, I just want to say thanks for b having us as well, Mark. It was a pleasure being here. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night at Craddock Road on Saturday night at the David Freeman Center of Excellence. Have a wonderful night. It's a pleasure being here. So I too would want to invite all of Nevis to Craddock Road tomorrow night to the David Freeman Center of Excellence on Saturday and on Sunday at Caravan Cove. Some lady called me and said to me, 
we should make sure that the ladies are also included. So ladies, if you want to come to Kevin Cove to accompany the daddies, please come. And another lady said to me that some women are both mother and father. So please come out. The reality is that we want, we'll have some good barbecue. I'm told them guys have a lot of shellfish and fish and all kinds of things. It's just really to come and have a good time. We're going to have some DJs and some music. And it is really about the camaraderie. So please come out on Sunday. This is a party that cares about everybody. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, show is got broadcast. This <laughs> show is <laughs> broadcast tomorrow at 1 p.m. right here on Von Radio. I'm being reminded. But you know, when the band strikes up, it means it's time to go. So we want to thank all who called, all who listened, and all who are part of this show. And we look forward to continuing the message of hope for the Concerned Citizens Movement tomorrow. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Views and opinions expressed on the preceding program were solely those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Nevis Broadcasting Company Limited or its advertisers. With all the power from the tower, this is the 